Hi folks, we're going to take a look at uh, the graph of this function given here. Okay, so first thing I noticed is that I've got a higher degree in the numerator than in the denominator, and in fact, exactly one more. So I know it's going to go um, to positive and negative infinity along a uh, linear oblique asymptote. So let's keep that in mind as we're doing it. So first thing we have to do is see if there's any simplification and uh, also in doing the simplification, we factor, and that helps us determine x-intercepts and um, uh, vertical asymptotes. Okay, so again, before you uh, run and try to use the uh, factor theorem, I hope you notice here that we've got uh, a trinomial uh, that we can factor using traditional methods, and here we have a sum of cubes. Good idea to start learning the formula for sum of cubes. So here, I'm going to rewrite this as x squared squared minus 7 times x squared, so we'll kind of treat this as a variable, plus 12, and here the formula for uh, sum of cubes, okay, so what makes this 0 is negative 1, because negative 1 cubed plus 1 is 0, so I know x plus 1 is going to be one of my factors, and the quadratic that remains is going to be x squared, and one way to remember it is that when it's the sum, you have x plus 1, and then you're going to have a subtraction inside the, um, the quadratic here. So it's going to be x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, let's continue with the numerator here. So this uh, two numbers that multiply to 12 add up to negative 7. So it's going to be x squared minus 3 times x squared minus 4 all over x plus 1 is x squared minus x plus 1. Now notice here I'm not factoring this. This is not factorable. And if you quickly check the discriminant uh, in the quadratic formula, you'll see that you'll get a negative number in there. So there's no other zeros that come from this second factor in the denominator, which we shouldn't expect because x cubed plus 1, if you think about it, has only one x-intercept. Okay, and we can uh, use a difference of squares here. So x squared minus 3 times x plus 2, x minus 2, all over x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, so a very busy function, uh, especially since nothing reduces, uh, so there's no holes. So let's start our, um, our analysis here. So we'll start with the domain. Okay, so the domain, any, the only thing that makes the denominator equal to 0 is the negative 1. So our domain is x can be any real number such that x is not equal to negative 1. Uh, we'll go to the x-intercepts, okay? So what makes the numerator 0? Well, clearly we have 2 and minus 2, okay? But while this is not uh, factorable in terms of uh, uh, integers, we can solve x squared minus 3 equals 0, so x squared equals 3. x can be equal to plus or minus root 3. Okay, so we also have plus or minus root 3 as an x-intercept. Uh, let's go to the y-intercept. Okay, so if I stick in x equals 0, notice here, I think it's a lot easier to work with the um, original function instead of the factored form. So if we put in x equals 0, any term with an x disappears. So I'm just left with 12 over 1. So y-intercept is 12. Let's go to our vertical asymptotes. So here, whatever makes the denominator 0, which in this case here is just negative 1, so x equals negative 1 is the only vertical asymptote. Uh, let's go to the end behavior. Okay, so here we have to do a little bit of work because we have to determine the quotient of the division of those two polynomials. Now, because I'm dividing by a cubic and not a linear, I have to use long division. So again, I'll do that on the side. So x to the fourth. Don't forget you have to add terms uh, that uh, you don't see there. So plus is 0x cubed minus 7x squared plus 0x plus 12. And we're dividing that by here, uh, it's going to be x cubed uh, plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 1. Okay, so I need to eliminate this x to the fourth, so I'm going to multiply this thing by x. So we'll put that here. So x times this expression is going to be x cubed plus 0, uh, sorry, x to the fourth plus 0x cubed plus 0x squared uh, plus x. Okay, let's subtract that. 
So here we end up with zero. Here we also end up with zero. And now we're left with negative seven minus zero. So negative seven X squared uh, minus X and then bring down the 12. But we see that we can't go any further. Okay, we can't use X cubed to get rid of this X squared. So this is in fact the remainder of our division. So that means that our uh, end behavior is given by the oblique asymptote. So we have an oblique asymptote of y equals x. Okay. And lastly, we're going to determine the sine of the function. Okay. So here, sine of y, and I'll make it nice and long because we got lots of numbers to work with. So here, while, you know, I'm going to keep the exact number here, we got to figure what's uh, uh, root three is about, uh, is approximately 1.7. So here, that means negative two is still the smallest number. Okay, and then we've got, I guess, negative 1.7 for the negative root three. Okay, here we have the negative one is a zero. Okay, then we've got our uh, positive two, or I guess our, our positive 1.7 comes first. And then finally, our positive two. So lots of intervals to check. So let's try to do this as, uh, <clears throat> as quickly as we can. Okay, now real quick here, we see that this doesn't have um, any x-intercepts, okay? So I guess the question is, is it always positive or is it always negative? So let's stick in any number. In fact, let's stick in x equals zero um, and we get positive one. So we know that this denominator is always, or that factor of the denominator is always positive, all right? So again, why? Because a quadratic can only change sign as a zero. It has no zeros. So as soon as it's positive at one number, it's got to be positive everywhere. Okay, so I don't even need to deal with it because it's always positive. It won't change the sign. Okay, so let's pick negative uh, three here. I guess we'll pick negative 1.8. We got to pick something in between. Uh, here we'll pick negative uh, 1.5. Here I guess we can pick zero. Here we can pick uh, 1.8. And here we'll pick three. Okay. So if we put in uh, negative three, so that's negative three squared, nine minus three. So we have positive negative three plus two is negative. Okay. Negative three minus two is also negative. And the denominator, remember, we just have to check that one there. We know that's going to be positive. And so we have uh, negative three plus one is negative. So we have positive in the numerator over negative. So this is going to be negative. Okay negative 1.8. Okay, so we know that, so negative 1.8 squared minus three, if you're not sure, give it a try here. So what do we have? So negative 1.8 squared, so it'll end up being positive, okay, minus three, and we see that that's a uh, positive number. Okay, so um, where are we at here? So what did we say? This was positive. Okay, negative 1.8 plus two is also positive, but minus two is negative. And then here in the denominator, negative 1.8 plus one is negative. So here we have negative over negative is positive. Okay, let's check negative 1.5. Okay, so negative 1.5 squared minus three. There we go, that's a negative value. Okay, so here we have negative, uh, negative 1.5 plus two is positive, um, minus two is negative, and negative 1.5 plus one is negative. So in the end, we have positive over negative. This is negative, okay? Zero, we actually already tested because that's where the y-intercept is. So we know it's gonna be positive because we already tested that there. Okay, let's check uh, 1.8. Uh, squared minus three, that was the same as negative 1.8 squared minus three. So here we know that that first one is positive. 1.8 plus two is positive, but 1.8 minus two is negative over 1.8 plus one is positive. So negative over positive, negative. And then here three, well here everything is gonna be positive. So obviously all those multiplications and divisions will be positive. Okay, so lots of stuff to check, but now we can start thinking about doing our graph. All right, so uh, let's take a look at our the numbers we're working with. 
here all pretty nice numbers uh, pretty small so I'm gonna go up by one on my x-axis I need to have a y-intercept of um, 12 if I don't fit that on my graph I'm not too worried about it because I do need to fit this uh, y equals x okay so I would like to uh, get something that's not too hard to draw so maybe what I'll do is I'll put my Oh, not the best of, uh, let's see if I got it. Oh, here, I got a better ruler here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll save myself enough space to get to 12. So I'll go up by two. So maybe if I go here, okay. I'll go here. Okay, put my x-axis there. Okay. And I'll put the y-axis right down the middle since I have similar positive and negative values. Okay, there's my y-axis. I'll go up by one here, one, two, but I'll go up by two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We'll see if we can get to the y-axis nicely or not. Okay, so let's draw our vertical asymptote. There's only one at x equals negative one. So let's draw our vertical asymptote. And let's draw our uh, oblique asymptote. So here's 0, 0, so 1, 1, okay, and 1, negative 1. So our vertical, our oblique asymptote is going to look something like this. So notice how I used a different scale on X and Y. So I do have to be careful about how I draw it. Okay, so let's try to get that as nice as possible. Now remember, this oblique asymptote is all about the end behavior what happens in the middle is of no consequence. Okay, and let's put our uh, intercept. So here we have in, in x intercept at two and at 1.7 and then negative two and negative 1.7. Okay, so we see that it's a little close. Actually, now that I think of it, I could have probably split this up a little more. All right, and so now, we've got uh, everything we need to draw this graph. All right, so <clears throat> let's see what this is gonna look like. We're going here from negative to positive and then back to negative, okay? So negative to positive, back to negative. So I'll probably have something that looks like this. Okay. So we know it has to follow the, oops, sorry. We know it has to follow the oblique asymptote. It's got to come to the positive and go negative again after uh, negative 1.7. And so this is going to have to go to uh, negative infinity. Okay. Then on the other side of negative one, what do we have? We have positive, negative, positive. So it's going to be positive. It's going to come down, go to the negative for that little bit, and then have to come back up this way. Okay, so let's see if I can try to get that y-intercept in there. It's going to be a little, you know, a little tough. There you go. So you're going to have to have something like this. There you go. That's not too bad. Okay. Um, so the graph is going to look something like this. Okay, let's just do a quick recap. Okay, number uh, one is to factor to see if any simplification occurs. In the end, there was no simplification, but factoring, of course, helps us determine um, uh, the things we need to know. So x-intercepts, you look at the numerator, vertical asymptotes, the denominator. And behavior, notice how I worked with the original equation to find the, or the original expression to find the end behavior, because it's not easy to do division when it's in factored form. So remember, these two things are equivalent. That's why to find the end behavior, I use that to find the um, uh, equation of the oblique linear the linear oblique asymptote. Then I found the sign. I set up my structure to the graph, okay? And in the end, I got my graph. Now, I believe it turns out that there's a little bit of a squiggle that goes on in this area of the graph. You know, that's why you notice it was a little tough to draw nicely, okay? 
but that involves finding maxima and minima for which we don't have the tools yet to do. Okay, that's it for this one.